Hi guys, Merry Christmas. So this is Brandon Ahmad. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and here I am on the day before Christmas, Christmas Eve, making training videos. All right. Um, actually guys, you thank my students for this. This was complete peer pressure. And let me tell you what generally happened. I kept on getting push, 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 you know, with everyone like, Brandon, you need to make videos. You need to make videos. So guys, here are the videos. Now, here we go. Pretty much in business, guys, one universal tenet of business is reporting, right? I mean, reporting is big time. Wouldn't it be nice if there was some awesome reporting tool that you could just use that probably, you know, didn't really cost much extra in licensing because it's already included if someone's running Microsoft SQL Server? Yes. And wouldn't it also be nice if, if you could actually learn the fundamentals of the tool without having to pay $3,000 for training? Yes. And wouldn't it also be nice if a Microsoft certified trainer actually took over this duty because his students pushed him? Yes, that's me. Okay. Um, guys, I'm a very hyped up instructor about this sort of stuff and I love it and I hope you like these series of videos. Let's get started with Re um, Report Builder and begin to discuss all of this. So I'm going to close this over here and by the way, forget my son's room. Um, it's his room and there's bunches of boxes because I'm going to be moving soon, but not yet. <laughs> all right, thank you. So one of the largest advantages with Microsoft is stuff like this. Um, you can start from the very beginning and find tons of free tutorials online. Microsoft has always been very proactive about that at least. Now, that being said, you know, one of the things that really trips people up is that they just don't know about them. Because look at this. If you take a look at this, these are all your fundamentals of Report Builder where you can start going through it step by step by step. Even if you're a brand new user and you don't know how to um, um, have a virtual machine or set one up by, you know, installing Windows and whatever, you can sign up for a free six month cloud you know, subscription with an email address where you can come through and actually do these tutorials step by step by step. So this is absolutely a wonderful point for getting started. Um, I'm going to go through this tutorial essentially, so all credit goes to Microsoft in this case, but I'm going to step through and explain all these steps and demonstrate them to you and show you how to build a report. And I'm going to add an instructor tinge to it, you know, as someone who's taught a few thousand people, and I have, uh, as far as on what you do and why you do it and also just seeing it. So we get that part over there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here inside of my inside of my um, SharePoint team site. Now this is an image that I just built last night and yes I had to fix all kinds of little errors that will probably be fixed later on as this, um, as this product matures more that is SQL Server 2012, SharePoint 2013 and Windows Server 2012 but as of now there are a few little hiccups that that's somewhat of an understatement. Okay but anyway now that it's all fixed come back down I'm going to click on a reports library right over here. And this is my reports library, and you guys see this is the Metro interface now for SharePoint 2013. Now, for those of you who are brand new, you may not see this interface inside your SharePoint 2010. We all know the story. Microsoft changed their look and feel to basically, to basically be more reflective of mobile type of browsing because that seems to be the trend in the market. Whether or not that's a wrong decision, good decision, bad decision, I don't know. Don't really know at all, but that's what we're dealing with now. So this is our Metro style interface over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right over here on these steps and I'm going to go through them and just demonstrate this report to you and start clicking on it and making this report and explaining what all these things are. So the first thing you do is you start from SharePoint and this is whether you're in SharePoint 2010 or SharePoint 2013, you name it, and you come down and here I click on files, okay? Now under files what I'll see is I'm going to see a new document. Now. Remember this over here, what it depend, um, whenever you click new document these drop down options come up, right? But all of these drop down options depend upon pre configured settings. Some of you are like content types. Yeah, but I'm not talking about that in this lecture. Um, so, pre configured settings that you've actually accepted that allow for these drop downs to go through. One of the drop downs over here is a report builder report. So, I'm going to click over here. And I'm going to say open. Now, keep in mind that this is one of those things, I'm going to click run, where there, are, where there are around 10 ways to be able to skin a cat, so to speak. Um, 10 ways to open up Report Builder that I can think of probably quite easily. But for right now, I'm going to use the, I'm going to, I'm going to launch it from that document option over there because that works too. All right, now, this is pretty nice. So we got a reporting library in SharePoint that we need to up, um, we need to send our report to. So then that way we can share it with people, okay? But the next thing that we get now is we get this tutorial up here. And you guys see, this is Report Builder over here, once again, built to be very, very friendly. Doesn't really look too different from the 08R2 version, just a few additional things that are really in there. Um, a little bit different from the 08 version, however, and you know, you guys start to see all this and we've got these friendly wizards and this is pretty impressive. So we start right off the bat with choosing how do we want to allow our report to be laid out, okay? Do we want it to be a square table 
or do we want pretty charts or do we want maps that people can see where they connect things left and right and up and down etc we got all those options so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start over here with the table or matrix wizard and that's the very first step now once you create the table or matrix wizard or you get it started the first thing it's gonna ask you is to choose a data set now here's what a data set is it's the data that's going in your report okay okay but here's what SSRS does um, while you're working with it and designing it as you guys will see you get what's known as the metadata that's just going to contain the column names and the table names the reason for that is so that, is so that way while you're designing the report um, you can you can move things around and whatever like we're going to be doing here in just a little bit um, and then turn around and actually load data in what's known as the preview phase we're going to see that in a little bit so what you do first is you pull all the data from the columns and tables first and then you turn around and you actually um, you actually pull the data later when you run the report. Remember that critical distinction. So anyway, data set over here is just the data we're going to be pulling. So we click next. Or at least the columns. At, at the very beginning, it's going to be the columns and the tables. And then later on, it fills up with rows once we run it. You'll see what that distinction is. Now, once we get over there, guys, the first thing we got to see is what's known as the data source. Okay. You could make this complicated and say, oh, the data source is going to be the abstraction and the interface that actually bridges two APIs and... I don't care about that, guys. Guys, data source is going to be this. It's going to be some text that's going to tell you that's going to tell you the database name, the server name where it can find that database, and it's also and it's also going to contain the username and password to be able to access that database. There, enough said. So I click on data source connections and I click new because I'm making a new connection to some sort of data source. And I'm going to say over here, um, I'm going to connect to AdventureWorks. I'm going to call this AdventureWorks data source. I could have used any data source here, though, but AdventureWorks data source. Let's say the AdventureWorks database has got my information. Then what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to tell it to what type, SQL Server, Oracle. It depends on what they use at your shop. So over here, I'll just use Microsoft SQL Server. Then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on Build because now I need to tell it what, what, what text to use to connect first. What's the server name of the actual data? What's the server name of the database server that actually hosts the database? Here, because I'm on the same server that I'm actually using, you know, for demonstration development, localhost means same server, which is called BIDC in this case. For you though, you'd have to get that. You'd have to get that from your um, local SQL Server administrator, and they would give you that information. Next, I'm telling it use Windows authentication again. That's if that setting's been enabled. But if that setting has not been enabled, or if you have to um, access the database in a different way then you would actually enter a username and password over here that's got you know the permissions for you to do what you need to do and again your local your local database administrator would know that now for connect to a database click the down arrow for me and here I'm gonna choose AdventureWorks 2012 now once you see AdventureWorks 2012 that tells you that you're connecting to a database by the way 